Hi everybody, I am Monica, 93.1 KISS FM. In here with me is none other than comedian, actor, and all-around brilliant dude, Jim Brewer. Wow, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm good. We had a weird start this morning, huh? We did. Tell was, me what happened. Um, I got a phone call in my hotel room, and I picked up the phone, and uh, he said, you're supposed to be on the radio right now. I'm like, what? Okay, hold on a second. Okay, but, and I called my publicist, like, hey, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> she went, you're ready? You get, you're supposed to be in studio. Like, oh, no. Oh, God, no. It's okay, it happened. No. Um, no, my publicist is really good. She sends me emails, blah, blah, blah. What I didn't, I was in Metallica mode. Okay. Right? So I look at what Metallica sends me. I completely blanked on, oh, yeah. You, you're doing your thing too while you're out here, <laughs> and when you do your thing, um, there's this whole schedule that goes to it. So I remember looking like, did she send me? And sure enough, there it is. Like you have to leave at this time. I never even. It's okay. I never even it's looked. All I would love to say I lied. And like you know what? My <laughs> wife's going through this thing. And then my kids and like oh, things are really hard. No, it was just full blown. Yeah. It That's happens. It. Yeah. Hey, how did, did you get how did you get hooked up with this whole Metallica thing? You're a huge Metallica fan? Die hard. Oh my gosh, what's I, your favorite song? Ooh, that's hard. Um, I every song means something a little different. I could tell you uh, the songs that bring me back are Damage Inc. Uh, no Remorse, Sad but True, mm -hmm. Holier Than Thou. Uh, those are, those have the deeper, uh, um, Leper Messiah. Oh my gosh, there's you're going old school. There's so many, well, there's so many, yeah. like Leper Messiah, we didn't go to church. My dad was a World War II vet, so he was completely, had a different vision of life. Uh, my mom grew up, uh, where, another word, lost her, she, she wanted church, but she was shunned by the church because she was this, and it was all this, all whatever. And uh, so, but we believed in faith and God and morality, and so songs like Leper Messiah made a lot of sense to me. It was very thought provoking and actually brought me closer and deeper to my thoughts, too. And then, uh, No Remorse, No Regret is very how the whole war machine of just, yeah, no, this is what we're going to go in, we're going to kill people, and mm -hmm. this is what we do, and that's how it goes, and then we make money. Uh, and then Sad But True is, for me, King Nut. There's a lot of songs. I almost, I, I can, maybe I'm putting a little too much out there. Metallica, for me, was more than just music. It was, uh, it was a philosophy. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a way of life. It's me analyzing deeper thoughts of how I look at life to sad but true was more about the devil always taunting you or addictions that control you um, so yeah it's hard to say one song yeah no that's cool me. that's super cool so how did you get hooked up to open up for them <clears throat> I think there's a little bit of a backstory the backstory is um, I do know the band I know James and Lars mm -hmm. very well. James and I really know each other well. Our kids grew up together, but I think where that really started was when I was in Senate Live in the 90s. I was hanging out with Lars, we were hanging out, and um, James' wife and our wives just hit it off. And then our kids started growing up together. And then I remember the band, I had a radio show, and I said, oh, I didn't get Metallica. And they all looked at me and they went, he's thinking he's, he's get Metallica. Like, no, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm really thinking of being like, this guy is great. And like, he got the whole band. And I knew them enough to go, we're not going to talk about the record. We're going to do a game show. And they came in and we did a game show, which I believe is on YouTube. Okay. okay. It's definitely on YouTube. And I would do uh, question segments, and they were so into it, I, my hand to God, the tour manager walked in and went, dude, we gotta, we gotta go. 
And they all went, whoa, one more, I know, we have five more minutes, but we're not done, we're not. And they were oh, competing. Yeah. And when it was over, they pulled me aside and said, what were you doing? We have never had the entire band together more than 10 minutes. You have to meet here over an hour. Oh my God. And I went, I don't know, it was just, that I think then led to James going, hey, we got this thing called the 30 year anniversary for our fans and we want to, we want to do something for our fans. Can you kind of do what you did with us game show, but, but do for the fans? And I was like, yeah, sure. When I showed up, I realized, oh my God, we need Ozzy's here. And it's just, oh my God, every night's a different, oh my God, look at all the guys over here. And it was, um, I would go up to 15 minutes of stand up and then do crowd interactive and game show all Metallica driven. I think that was the premise of this. James and Lars reached out, hey, would you want to do something with us? As a stand up, like, yeah. It, think of it this way. Lars said it best. Lars said, listen, we love to have bands open for us. We love exposing bands. Nobody comes to see them. As much as there's 5% of the good man, how come they don't it? You're 0.05% of the fans that want that. <clears throat> Nobody comes to see the band. It's a bummer for the bands. It's a bummer for them. He goes, so now we just want to give something for the fans. Can you give the crowd a metallic experience? And Lars like, listen, you know how to read a crowd. You're one of, you're one of us. You're one of them. You feel like doing stand-up for 10 minutes? Do it. Tell stories of us hanging out. Bring a DJ. Do whatever you want. Just entertain him. And he goes, and by the way, don't expect anyone to be in the arena when you walk out. Because <laughs> you're lucky there's a thousand people. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think I've averaged about three quarters of the arena filled. And by the time I leave, it's packed. And I did not expect that. Never been booed off stage. And I think I, I'm the MC host of what we call the pre-Metallica party. I love it. And we keep it going. I crowd in Iraq. Sometimes I go running up in the crowd to point someone out. Um, sometimes I do stand-up. Sometimes I do game shows. We bring someone up on stage. We give them some credit. We, we give them some questions. Sometimes they're booed off the stage, which is technically my favorite. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's a pretty awesome atmosphere before yeah. they go out. Well, it's, I don't I don't know I've ever been to a concert where they've had... You the haven't. Weekend. I haven't. No. And the coolest thing was, and this is why Metallica is brilliant. Uh, they're always looking for that different thing. Um, the, the Foo Fighters and some other... There were some bands, too, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were like... I forgot. I don't remember what the band was from. Like Cannibal Corn. Whatever they're from. And they were going... There was guys from Corn. Mm -hmm. They were going... I didn't want to like this. They're like, this is, I'm calling my manager, and I think this, this is the way we should tour. Forget getting other bands, we, we, this is the way we should tour. And I do think if you're, I think, I think Metallica hits something. It's, if you're that big, everyone's there to see you. Mm -hmm. No one wants to see, no one wants to see. I remember going to, I like Volbeat. I saw Volbeat, Metallica did one arena show on their stadium tour a year or two ago. And the one arena show was in Long Island, where I first saw them in 1986 opening for Ozzy. And Volby was opening, I went, I gotta go see it. And nobody was out there. No. It was so awkward. Like, how is this, how is nobody, <laughs> how am I able to stand like right next to the stage? Like, what, what's going on? It's, it was, I don't know. It's just one of those fans. Yeah, no, they're nice. Wait for Metallica. Yeah. I don't think it's it's the way it used to be when I was growing up. We used to go to, obviously, lots of concerts and stuff, but you used to get introduced to new bands by the opener. That's how we, we and they used to put on the posters and whatnot. Now, you don't even know who's opening. No. They do have a band, but you didn't ever, they never mention it. I also think the state of hard rock uh, rock and metal is at a, a weird place where there is no one really popping out and raising their eyebrow. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to come in another two or three years. 
because uh, there's just no one out there that makes you go, oh, yeah. To me, there will, there will be. Yeah, there always is. There always is. There always is. So what else have you been up to? Uh, comedy. You've got your radio show. I don't do radio shows. You don't shows do anymore. Any I do a podcast. Oh, the podcast. Yes. Um, and that's more the the heavier side of me. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you want to go far out, we go there. Uh, this year, I started doing, uh, actually a year ago today, I started doing a residency. Where at? In Long Island, in oh. New York. And it's a gorgeous venue called the Paramount. It's a 1,200 seater. And it's been sold out once a month. I do different shows. It's called Comedy Stories and More. Once in a while, I'll have music, but it's, it's storytelling and stand-up comedy. And now it's branching out into, now it's going to be Atlantic City and Boston and so, Connecticut. So this is a little bit of what I love playing places like this is I bring some of that, but this is also a place where I'm like, oh, being Metallica town, I'm going to tell you some Metallica stories. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you the funny things that I've been seeing backstage. And I'm going to bring some of the metal stuff that I material that would only work here and then and then my regular stand up and all that jazz i'm not a politics guy or yeah. news guy so i mean you're obviously going to be writing a lot or do you write all the time are you always i inspired? started writing now okay no i write when i say write i'm constantly creating new material um but write i started writing this year and i've been lazy for 30 years <laughs> You're procrastinating. And now, it's okay. And now, like, oh, wow, this actually taking two, three hours a day to write something? Wow, what a game changer this is turning into. <laughs> Who would have thought? But at the same time, for a long time, when I go home, I'm home, I got kids. I had, uh, my kids are getting older now, but I, I have a 20-year-old daughter, 17-year-old daughter, 14-year-old wow. daughter. So those, those years of them home, I really wanted to be there. So, uh... I, I feel like I balanced my life out very well, so the best of me is still yet to come. Mm -hmm.